So today, guys, we are talking about PMS and Bex here is going to talk us through three of the most common symptoms and strategies on how to deal with them. So Bex, hit us with the first one. What's some common symptom that we see um, with women struggling with uh, premenstrual syndrome? So cravings is always the most popular one um, we see. So become aware of what your body is craving. Is it the same kind of things each month? The most um, common thing we usually see is carbohydrate rich foods. Yeah. So instead of going you know, straight away for chocolate and ice cream, give your body what it's asking for, glucose, but give it a more you know, nutrient dense version of a, of a carbohydrate source. So things like oats, sweet potatoes, um, peanut butter, those things are still energy dense. They're still sweet, but they're gonna give you a little bit more um, extra nutri nutrients in there as well. Um, and then as well, a regular meal structure. So having three main meals, maybe one or two snacks structured in as well. And also evenly distributing your protein throughout the day as well just to help keep you feeling full between each meal yeah that's amazing tips like that it's not just about right food choices is it? it's about actual timings and structure and that can make a massive difference um you time. touched on protein there even when you're craving carbohydrates so that's a really essential thing isn't it like getting that in because it's a satiated nutrient we want to distribute it across the day and we find that makes a massive difference to big time to, to big things time. so you're talking about cravings but and you're saying you shouldn't necessarily fight against them all the time. And you shouldn't necessarily give in to them all the time. It's about kind of finding alternatives and a, exactly. and a structure that, that works for you. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Um, I think that's a really essential thing, guys. Look, that is a really important point about meal timings and structure and assessing your triggers. Mm -hmm. You might find that you get cravings at certain times of the day after certain meals, after certain you know food groups that you might have eaten. So don't just blanketly like like beck said don't just blanketly kind of say like oh i get cravings i must eat sugar um mm. you can find alternatives and and uh you know find your triggers in the system and uh, and put some intervention in place which beck's covered there cravings definitely the most you know the, the most common one but what's the next one that we got uh, got on the list low mood i'd say low mood um is also extremely common so exercising moving your body increasing those endorphins serotonin as well um, just simply by moving the body finding what works for you um, again carbohydrates um, are going to be good to help release serotonin but again looking for those healthier alternatives so maybe your fiber rich carbohydrates your whole grains um, also things uh, foods rich in tryptophan which is an amino acid that helps to produce serotonin. Mm -hmm. So things like your poultry, your meats, beans, um, lentils, um, nuts and seeds, that kind of thing are going to be really good as well. Uh, B vitamins are gonna, is going to be a great one for enhancing energy. So things again, like your beans, lentils, uh, poultry, uh, bananas, really good um and then i think fluids as well making sure that you're keeping the body hydrated um water intake can have a huge effect on your energy levels as well so yeah. just trying to trying to make sure you're eating uh, drinking enough water throughout the day definitely get up sure. get hydrated stay hydrated that's yeah. the key i think don't try and do it later in the day if you get up boom straight away that's a, that's a kind of key focus point and we often don't necessarily associate these types of things with mood you know so mm. it's a really really great thing to kind of say like look there's our food food does affect our emotions and it's you know uh, it can really affect uh, you know this common symptom that we do see so definitely kind of get those in talking about food would you maybe kind of get people to maybe supplement with a with a b vitamin at this time maybe you know, not all the way through the month they could you know necessarily get it from a supplement at this you know moment in time when they kind of feel that they need that little bit of support potentially yeah and i think um also just touching on supplements it might be worth if you know that maybe you're not getting a, a wide variety of fruits and veg in it might be worth introducing something like a greens powder mm. just to make sure that you're getting in a good variety of all your fruits and veggies because that in itself is going to make you feel so much better yeah, and greens powders can taste 
a little bit funky, but we like the amazing grass ones. Uh, there's yeah. lots of different ones out there now that are really good. And if you do mix them with a little bit of almond milk or coconut milk, like and a bit of water, they can taste good. Um, but you can stir them into shakes and stuff like that. That's a really good thing. I'm a huge fan of greens powders. I think they're a really Me nice too. way to include, you know, uh, a little bit more nutrient density in the diet. So really great tips there are on, uh, you know, something that I think a lot of a lot of women kind of suffer with is that low mood and. Just to wrap thing up, the last one, last uh, you know, common symptom that we see in a, in a simple strategy to be able to deal with it is? Bloating. Mm. So bloating is also very common. So trying to increase your nutrient-dense foods and reduce your processed foods as much as possible. So also your foods that are going to be high in salt, you want to limit those um, as well. And then again, water, making sure you are drinking enough water and reducing any fizzy drinks that's not going to help um with the bloating and then again going back to exercise just keep your body moving it's going to help keep things moving along um so yeah that's that's a really key thing isn't it like we we've done lots of videos on training and you've got a really lovely system in terms of like periodizing your training around your cycle and we're not saying you need to be hammering it but movement can be a really good thing for bloating because if we are seated sitting down we're, we're compressing everything down and it just can cause a little bit of tension a little bit of pressure onto the you know to the stomach and you know that can make you feel a bit uncomfortable at this time it's just compounding so we're not saying that you need to be going on hammer it but like Beck said you know just, just moving in general and, and mm. like, you know light intensity lower intensity work um, can be really really beneficial for that bloating going back to the first tip there just to just to uh, finish on we talked you talked to touch on meal structure Mm. And I see a lot of the time bloating and cravings come from an inconsistent pattern of eating. When there's you know, random times where you eat loads of, loads of food and then there's other times where you back low calories or you go really long stretches without eating. We're not saying that you have to follow five meals a day, you know, out of Tupperware every two hours. Mm. Yeah. Find a consistent structure that works for you. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, that's consistent. That could be four meals a day. It could be three meals, two snacks. It doesn't matter. The body loves consistency, but you will also be able to assess your triggers. And that's a really key thing for bloating for me. And I think you found that with clients, haven't you? Like when they get a very consistent pattern, actually they can assess when they get bloated and it's not just something that's random and that, that they accept. Exactly. And to be honest, mood as well. Having a regular meal structure will help control your energy levels. Um, so that's a really good tip for all three of those symptoms. Yeah, fantastic stuff. I think there's some really good take home tips, which are, which are really easy to implement. So, mm. you know, it definitely is kind of each month, you know, tracking your symptoms a little bit, using an app or a spreadsheet, uh, like exactly. we spoke about before, and being aware of these things and making these really simple tips, you know, in this video. So make sure you save this, share this with anyone that you think that, you know, could be very, uh, uh, or could be useful for them to, to kind of, know deal with these symptoms so that's really good stuff thank you very much um awesome great stuff thank you